Hi, my name is Candace Moore. Hi, my name is Candace Moore. Hello, and welcome to our webinar presentation, which is entitled, What Every Small Business Owner Needs to Know About the Illinois Concealed Carry Act. My name is Angela Hall, and I'm from the Law Project. We're one of the projects of the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. The Law Project provides a full range of transactional representation and strategic legal advice to community organizations. Until the Law Project's founding in 1985, the issue of finding legal assistance for community development efforts was not addressed. TLP utilized a combination of full-time staff and volunteer attorneys to provide a variety of legal assistance. For example, in relation to our small business clients, we review contracts, prepare loan docs for real estate transaction, and do all kinds of legal assistance related to small for-profit businesses. For the purpose of today's webcast, since the early 1990s, the Law Project has worked with individuals who are starting and have their own existing small businesses through our small business program. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Candace Moore, who's with the Illinois Council for Handgun Violence, and she's going to be presenting our webinar today. Thank you. Hi, um, my, my name is Candace Moore, and I'm with the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Um, I serve as the campaign coordinator for our Concealed Carry Education Campaign. And um, the position of the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence in respect to uh, Illinois' Concealed Carry Act is regardless of our individual views about whether concealed carry should or should not be a part of the Illinois law, um, the reality is that it is and, it, and it's not going anywhere. And so our position is that we all must be informed, as informed as possible to ensure that it's implemented safely and with the greatest protection for all citizens. And this is why we launched the Concealed Carry Education Campaign. So I'm here today to give you a little bit more information about what concealed carry, uh, what, what's in the content of the law, and then also really apply that specifically to the context of a small business. Um, I, I'd like to begin by showing you uh, at the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence, we've created a handbook, which is the Illinois Citizens uh, Concealed Carry Law Handbook. And this handbook is, uh, is just a resource for citizens, for businesses about the contents of the concealed carry law. Um, we have physical copies of this, and then we also have electronic comp copies uh, on our website, which is www.concealedcarryandme.com. This is a website that our organization created explicitly for the purpose of educating both citizens and businesses about concealed carry. So again, that's www.concealedcarryandme.com. Um, but today, I, I just want to sort of break some of that down, really give life and to what's in our handbook, and then um, just sort of give a little bit, a little bit more context for how this uh, Concealed Carry Act impacts businesses. So I'm going to start off giving you a little bit of an outline of how this is going to work, and then I'll go into the into the details. So first, I'm going to give some background about how concealed carry, um, uh, how the concealed carry law uh, came to life in Illinois. Then I want to talk about how, how a person gets a license, because I think it's important to know the process there for businesses, to know who's getting the license. And then um, letting you know a little bit more about what does that license allow, so what types of hand, what, what types of guns we're talking about allowing with the Concealed Carry Act, and then specifically addressing some issues on how that's going to impact your business. So to start off with the background, for the first time in Illinois, licensed residents are allowed to carry a loaded, concealed firearm in public. So it, back in December of 2012, a federal court found that Illinois' complete ban against concealed carry was in violation of the Second Amendment of the, of the, of the U.S. Constitution and ordered the, United, and ordered the state of Illinois to adopt a law allowing at least some individuals to carry a loaded, concealed handguns in public. 
As a result of this, in July 2013, the legislature passed the Illinois Concealed Carry Act and set up an application process for licensing through the Illinois State Police and began li issuing licenses uh, in March 2014 of this year. So as this new law is implemented throughout Illinois, Illinois residents, especially businesses, business owners, are raising many questions. So some of the questions that we're experiencing at our organization, sort of hearing from the business community, are how does concealed carry impact my business? So a really broad question, just like how does this impact, how is this going to affect what I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Can, does this now mean my customers can carry a loaded weapon into, into my property? And really, what does that mean for me if the answer is yes to that? Can I choose to prohibit customers from carrying a loaded weapon into my business if I feel like guns are not appropriate uh, appropriate in my business setting? And can my employees carry a loaded weapon at work? And all of these questions and more are, are things that we're hearing and that the business community is, is, is asking those questions. So we've tried to provide as much information um, as possible. And, and in many instances, unfortunately, though, that some, some of the answers aren't clear. Um, but we'll, we'll get into, the, into those issues um, a little bit more. Uh, my goal today is to provide a general overview of how the Illinois Concealed Carry Act impacts businesses throughout the state of Illinois. It's important for all business owners, managers, and decision makers to understand that their business decisions about concealed carry should not be taken lightly. If your business has specific needs, and, and concerns, it's best to, to seek individual legal counsel to determine the legal impact of your decisions and what steps you can take to safeguard your business. So I want to uh, add a little emphasis that this is not legal advice. We're providing some information about what the content of the Concealed Carry Act has here in Illinois, but, this, but if you have any specific concerns or specific needs, the real, really you really need to consult with an attorney to help you go through those issues and help give you advice about what steps you should take um, and what works best for your business. So now I want to talk about how does a person get a license. And in order to start that conversation, I think it's important that um, folks understand the difference between this may issue, a may issue state and a shall issue state. Um, so for laws across the United States, um, different states have have different types of laws and how they deal with concealed carry. The, the first general type is, is what's known as the may issue. Uh, law and in a May issue law, um, the law essentially says that if you meet X number of requirements, um, you submit your application, the state may issue you a license. The state does not have to if issue a license, the decision is discretionary, and the discretion can be based off of various different things. Um, the other type of law is a shall issue law, and that law essentially says that if an applicant meets certain requirements, then the state shall, the state must issue you uh, a, concealed, a concealed carry license. Illinois is mostly a shall issue state, but with a caveat. So I'm going to break down what our, what our version of the law says, but then also address what that caveat is. So in Illinois, the Illinois State Police shall issue a concealed carry license to a person who meets statutory qualifications. Those qualifications are that they are at least 21 years old. Uh, they must have a FOID card. A uh, FOID card is a firearm owner identification card, which has its own set of requirements. Um, they also must pass a criminal background check. That criminal background check is going to look at whether the person has prior felony convictions. They can't have prior misdemeanor domestic violence convictions. No prior violent misdemeanor convictions within the past five years. Um, they have not received two or more DUI convictions within the past five years. Uh, no prior misdemeanor controlled substance or cannabis conviction with the pa within the past year. Additionally, the applicant must pass a mental health background check. That mental health background check is going to look to see that the person has no mental disability adjudication, that they don't have any intellectual disabilities, that they don't have any developmental disabilities, um, that there also isn't a showing of an involuntary admission into a mental health facility, or that there's not a voluntary 
or they haven't re voluntarily received mental health treatment and, pre and present a clear and present danger. That's the standard that they'd be looking for. So aside from both of those checks that check all of these things into the background of the individual, the applicant must also obtain 16 hours of in-person training. The, these trainings are offered throughout the state of Illinois. They are offered mostly commercially, so those are, will be at the additional cost of the applicant and, and have varying different costs of, depending on the trainer. Um, and then also with the application, there's a, a $150 fee. So if a person meets all of those requirements, then the state of then the Illinois State Police shall issue that person a concealed carry license. However, the caveat is that there is there is a law there's an opportunity for law enforcement to object to a, to an applicant. So the way it works is that after an application is submitted to the Illinois State Police, it is entered into a searchable database. Um, that database is going to include the applicant's name, their date of birth their driver's license or state ID, and any address that they've had within the past 10 years. Uh, once, once, that per, once the applicant's name goes into the database, law enforcement may object within 30 days of entry into the database. Um, and the objection typically will be based off of, of information that law enforcement may have about the applicant that doesn't necessarily show up in their background check. So issues of arrest and other issues that they know of that may be going on in their community, community that would pose, a, pose some sort of threat if that applicant got uh, a concealed carry license. Law enforcement does have the opportunity to sort of speak up and say something about it. Um, but they must do that within 30 days of entry into the database. Um, there's also a, a small automatic objection, so there's going to be a presumed objection where an applicant was arrested more than five times within the past seven years or, th or three or more times within the past seven years for gang-related offenses. So these are merely objections. This doesn't this doesn't necessarily deny an applicant, but once an objection is raised, that means that that person's application is, is going to go before the licensing review board. Um, the, this board is comprised of seven seven members of the review board who are all who all have been appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. Uh, members from the review board come from each judicial district and represent a, a variety of pl uh, political backgrounds. So I believe it's six Democrats, six Republican, and one independent. Um, but this, but they also have additional requirements that they have at least five years experience as either a federal judge, a federal prosecutor, federal law enforcement, or mental health professional. Um, once the board receives an objection, they will have an opportunity to deliberate on whether that objection should be sustained, meaning that the person will not get their license, or whether it, whether they will overrule the objection, whether uh, they'll let the application go on, go forward. Um, the the board may hold hearings and and receive testimony or other evidence, but ultimately that board is going to be measuring uh, whether the whether the applicant gets uh, their concealed carry license by what's called a preponderance of the evidence. And they'd be looking to, uh, by a preponderance of the evidence whether the applicant poses a danger to themselves or to others or is a threat to public safety. The board, it, um, once they make the decision, they, they issue a binding decision to the Illinois State Police within 30 days. And um, those decisions are uh, there is an opportunity that remains available to appeal either administratively or, do, or, or through judicial review. So the moral of the story with all of that information, with all of those requirements, is that there's a lot that they're looking at in terms of, of who gets these licenses. And I think there's a lot of conversation about how many people, in fact, are getting licenses, who have gone through this entire process, who have sort of been vetted through all of these different channels. Um, there's, there's a little bit of misinformation going on throughout the state about actually how many people are getting these licenses. So I just want to clear that up just a little bit. Um, so in Illinois, we have a population of about 12.8 million people. Um, 
right now there are about 77,000 people with active licenses. So when you crunch the numbers, that's less than 1% of the population right now that has an active license. So some of this, this, uh, these conversations about everybody will have a concealed carry gun, everybody will be carrying in public, is just not the reality right now. Um, right now we're looking at less than 1% of the population that actually has a license. But even though that we're only talking about less than 1% of the, of the population, we are talking about an extraordinary amount of power and responsibility that comes with it. So it's important that we actually understand what the concealed carry law says. Um, should we come into contact with a situation where a person does have a concealed carry license? And so the first thing I think to understand is what, in fact, does the concealed carry license allow you to do? So for an individual who has a license, it authorizes the license holder to carry a handgun on or near his or her, per his or her body, completely or mostly concealed from view of the public, or on or near his body inside a vehicle. So um, to break that down a little bit, when we're talking about what a handgun is, so the, the, the license allows you to carry a handgun. So when we're talking about what a handgun is, there's a, there are many things that don't uh, aren't included in the definition of a handgun. So that's not a stun gun or a taser. That's not a machine gun. That's not a short barreled rifle or a shotgun. It's not a pneumatic gun, spring gun, paint gun, or BB gun. Um, so none of those are going to be under the definition of what a handgun is. A handgun has a very particular definition, and we're talking about um, a, a, a smaller gun um, um, that, that meets that definition. Um, additionally, under the Illinois Concealed Carry Law, there are no restrictions on the size of the magazine or the number of rounds of ammunition that may be carried in a concealed manner by an approved concealed carry license holder. So there's no limit on, on, on the magazine, but remember, again, we are talking about handgun. We're not talking about uh, an AK-47 or anything like that. That is not what this license allows. Um, additionally, uh, when we're talking about carrying, so the, the license is going to allow folks to carry that gun in public, and uh, carrying is also going to include to keep or carry a loaded handgun within a vehicle. Um, there's a, uh, there, vehicles can serve as a safe harbor, so this is a particular um, uh, provision in the law. And which allows a concealed carry license holder to store their handgun in the vehicle if they're parking in the parking lot of even a prohibited location. And I'll talk a little bit more about what locations are prohibited under law or not. But um, your vehicle can serve as a safe harbor. So if you're at a place and, and you, if you realize the place that you're going into is a prohibited location, you may store your gun in your vehicle as a safe harbor. Um, if you're going to do that and if you're going to leave the vehicle unattended, then the handgun must remain out of plain view under the seat or console or container or in the, even in the trunk, and the vehicle must be locked. So now that you have a lot of background information about what uh, is what concealed carry license does, who can get it. The real question for, for many of you who are looking at this from a small business perspective is how does this impact me? How does this impact my business? And I think to start is, is that as a public place, you may now encounter customers, employees, and visitors who can come to your business and lawfully carry a loaded firearm on your at, on your property, and that can mean a, a multi that can mean various different things. So that's all sorts of levels of responsibility, awareness, and things. So it's really important for business owners to really understand what that means. And um, although some places of businesses are going to be prohibited as a matter of statute under the law from allowing people to carry on their property. So there's going to be a group of businesses that the statute, the law says you can't have a gun here regardless of, of what, whether, what the business owner is saying or not. Um, there are others who are going to have a choice. So who can affirmatively decide that they don't want uh, handguns or they don't, they don't want to allow carrying on their property. And I'll talk a little bit more about what those businesses are going to do. So, but first I want to sort of 
go back and talk specifically under the law, there's a number of locations that you're not going to be able to uh, carry regardless of whether you have a license or not. And these are codified, and I'll go through them individually, but we're talking about preschools, elementary and secondary schools, and child care facilities, colleges and universities, and any real property, sidewalks, and common areas under the control of a public or private community college or university, playgrounds and public parks, bars, and this is important, also restaurants where more than 50% of the revenue is made from the sale of alcohol. So bars are sort of automatically going to fit into that category. They're making most of their money from the sale of alcohol. But restaurants, uh, restaurants that are making more of their money from alcohol than they are from any other type of revenue source are also going to fall under as a prohibited location. So that's important to know if you have a restaurant and you may and you have a bar at your restaurant and a lot of the money from your business is made from that bar, you need to really look at your books and make sure if you're get if more of, if more of your money is coming from that bar then you do fall as a prohibited location and you need to post a sign um, showing that um, also, state and local government buildings, including those under the control of the executive or legislative branch of the government, local government and court courthouses, jails and detention centers, libraries, hospitals, nursing homes, and mental health facilities, stadiums, arenas, and sporting events, Riverboats, racetracks, and off off track betting areas, airports, museums, zoos, and amusement parks, public transportation paid for uh, all or in part with state funds, public gatherings authorized by local government. So we're talking about street fairs and festivals. For example, the Chase of Chicago uh, came up this summer. The law was in effect. Uh, no carrying is permitted at the Chase of Chicago. So that's what we're talking about with those types of public gatherings. And then also uh, nuclear facilities and their parking areas. That seems sort of like a no-brainer, but it is codified in the law. So no, uh, no carrying on a nuclear facility. And I know I talked about this earlier, but I just want to come back to it again because it's really important. It's this vehicle safe harbor provision. So again, this is despite an explicit ban on concealed carry within the parking area of a prohibited location, a person who has a concealed carry license may still carry while inside their vehicle in the parking lot of that prohibited location. If that person is going to leave the vehicle unattended, the concealed carrier must place the handgun out of plain sight in a locked vehicle or a locked case before exiting the vehicle. So that includes the trunk, a locked trunk. He or she may only exit the vehicle while carrying to place an unloaded handgun in the trunk. So, so, so if the uh, if the concealed carrier is going to bring the uh, the the gun to the trunk, it needs to be unloaded. Um, this safe this safe harbor provision doesn't apply to any location where firearms are prohibited by federal law or locations that are regulated by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So, so essentially, what that means is um, there is no safe harbor for those places. There is no safe harbor for um, any place that that prohibits guns federally or by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, so those are the list of prohibited locations. There are a lot of them. There's more information in the book, but it's important for businesses to one to check and see if they fit under that, if they fit under there, and if so, to make sure that they have the proper signage. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about signage in, in, a, in a few moments. Um, but so that leaves this area of private businesses. So if you look at that list and you see that you're not on that list, then essentially it comes down. Uh, what the law is saying, then folks can carry in your business. Um, whether you put anything up, whether you write something down saying that they can, um, the way the law works is that if you don't fall under those prohibited locations, then a person with a concealed carry license can come and carry within your business. 
Now, for some businesses, they don't want that to happen. And so the question is, can a private business who don't fall under that statutory prohibition from allowing concealed carry choose to prohibit concealed carry on their property? And the answer is yes, they can. Private business owners may choose to prohibit concealed carry on their premises so long as the business posts a sign that complies with the regulations of the Illinois State Police. Uh, so the Illinois State Police have created, have been tasked with and have created a, a, a sign, um, which is a no gun sign. And there's actually a copy of it in the back of the uh, uh, back of the handbook that the that ICHB has put together. But the sign looks like this. And, and um, if you're going to post a sign, it needs to be at least this big. So this is four by six. It can be larger than that, but it has to be at least this big. And it must be posted at the entrance of any non-residential private property if the owner wants to choose not to allow carrying. Um, Another piece is that even the prohibited locations uh, do need to be putting up these signs as well, um, but regardless, they're prohibited as a matter of statute. So even if they don't, concealed carriers who have gone through the training, they know that what those locations are. They know that those areas are still prohibited. Um, the signs should be up in those areas, but even if they're not, they are prohibited under the law. But if you're going to choose to prohibit, the only way that that's going to stand true for, for your business is that you've posted this sign and you post it in a clear way at the entrance of where the public is going to come in. So essentially, you want to have it posted in such a way that no one can say, I didn't see the sign. So you don't want to put it all the way in the corner where someone can make the claim that I didn't see the sign when I came in. So it, 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 if you want to prohibit guns on, on, on your property affirmatively and you don't fall under those prohibited statutes, you need to post that sign in a clear way. Um, and it, another important thing to note for businesses is that although you're the business owner, if you don't own the real property, so we're talking about folks who lease the property, uh, the property that they those businesses need to make sure that the property owner is in agreement with you posting the sign because the way it works is that the ultimate authority to decide whether a sign can be posted, uh, the way the law is written, is that that decision rests with the uh, owner of the real property. So to, so to give that a little bit of an example, if I own a bakery or I own my business is a bakery, I lease it from ABC company. If I want to post a sign to prohibit uh, concealed carry on my property, I need to contact ABC company. They can either say, okay, Candace, go ahead, post that sign. It's fine with us. They could say no, and then I don't, I I can't post the sign, or they can say, no, we'll post the sign ourselves because we want to use, um, we'll order the signs, we want to use it for our whole building, um, et cetera. So make sure you're, uh, if this is something you want to do, it really is important that you contact whoever owns your real property if you're leasing the property to make sure that you have the approval to do that. Um, and, and then sort of another big question that comes up is, uh, uh, if, if I'm a business and I choose to uh, prohibit concealed carry on my business, uh, can, can, what about my employees? How does that work with my employees? Um, so concealed carry is allowed in businesses that are not identified as prohibited locations under the law and businesses that do not have a sign posted. Additionally, the Illinois Concealed Carry Act requires employers to allow their employees to store their handguns in locked vehicles out of plain sight. So that's that safe that that's the safe harbor provision that I was mentioning earlier. Employees may not carry a handgun into any location that is specifically prohibited under law. Uh, you can and you can look to that list of prohibited locations. Um, Additionally, employers may prohibit guns in their business by posting the approved signage, which, which would extend to employees, customers, and visitors of the business. As another important note here is that it's important that under the law, it's important to understand that under the law, it's unclear if employers, if employers who are not the owner of the business property need to take additional steps to prohibit their employees from caring while working. 
The Illinois Concealed Carry Act is silent and provides no guidance regarding the rights of employers. Uh, it, it's recommended sort of as best practice best practice that employers first establish an agreement with the property owner and or seek legal advice from an attorney as the courts have not fully addressed whether these decisions are entirely dependent on the property owner. So that's really important. Uh, there's a lot of questions that come up about how does this impact employees and um, the sort of short and sweet answer is that we don't know for sure. The law doesn't really address it, but there are laws ar around uh, employer, employee relations that exist already. Um, if you're trying to vet out those issues, you really should consult a knowledgeable attorney who's familiar with the area of employment law who can really help you vet those, vet those um, issues. Um, so with that, that's a general uh, overview of concealed carry. There are many more questions there. I actually want to open it up a little bit before, before I close out um, to see if any other folks might have some questions about that I could answer for them. Okay. Oh, got a question. Sorry. Okay. okay, so we have a question coming in. They're going to read it to me. I'll try to uh, put say it again just to make sure folks understand it and then try to answer it to the best of my ability. Okay. If a business does not prohibit concealed carry and there is a firearms related incident on its property, is the business liable for the incident? Okay, so the question is, um, if a business does not prohibit uh, concealed carry and there's a firearm-related incident, is that business going to be liable? And so, unfortunately, there is no clear answer on that on its face. Um, issues of liability are often very spe fact specific. Um, there are folks who will say, and I've heard this, they'll say they'll try to give definitive answers one way or the other, and um, from the lawyers that I spoke to, from my perspective, I really don't think there's a clear-cut answer. The Illinois Concealed Carry Act doesn't address the issue of liability directly, so we're not able to look to the statute for, for guidance there. We can look to case law, but case law is largely going to be impacted by the, those very fact-specific um, instances. But essentially, uh, these issues are going to if you're trying to get liability imp imposed on the employer, questions about what type of care they took, um, what type of risk that they exposed exposed uh, folks to, um, and affirmatively those types of risks, it, it's a very complicated analysis. There is really no clear answer there. So unfortunately, I can't give you any answer one way or the other, but just know that there's no right or wrong answer. So uh, I've heard arguments the other way that if you that liability can be imposed if you uh, if you do put up the sign if you don't put up the sign. So so really, I think the you, if you're really worried about that, maybe consult with an, your attorney so you can get a better idea of that. But then really just think about what works best for your business um, and for the clientele that you serve. Um, I think there were a couple more questions that were just handed to me. Um, the first is, if I prohibit concealed carry on my property for my customers, does that mean I, as the owner, can't have a gun on my property? Um, so the answer to that is no. So um, there, there was law in existence before the Concealed Carry Act that gave uh, a business owner the right to have a gun on their property to protect their property. The Concealed Carry Act doesn't touch that. So you can, uh, when you post a sign, you're telling the public that they can't bring a gun and carry it in your place of business. You're not, you're not then tying your hands to have a gun on your property. So the answer to that, uh, in short, is no. You, you still, as a business owner, um, you had that right before the Concealed Carry Act, and you still keep that right after the Concealed Carry Act. So that doesn't affect it. Um, another question was, if I see a customer in my store with a gun hanging in their clothes, what, what should I do? 
So um, that's going to depend. If you haven't posted a sign, then you're not going to be doing anything. They have a right. Um, uh, they, if they're a concealed carry holder, they have a right to have that gun. Um, I mean, I, I suppose you could ask if they're a concealed carry owner. I don't know if that's something you would be wanting to do. But so if you don't have the sign posted, you have to recognize that people who do lawfully have a license and have the ability to lawfully bring a weapon into your place of business and can be sitting there at the dinner table uh, with their with their handgun um, concealed or partially concealed. So if you see it a little bit, it's fine. Um, the law does include partially concealed. It just can't be completely open um, and out. So there is no open carry in Illinois. But um, if you don't have that sign posted, that that's something that you may see in your business. Um, if you do have the sign posted, um, you, you'll have to sort of play it by ear and thinking about how you want to deal with the situation. But you could simply um, go, go up to the patron and say, I, I don't allow concealed carry on my property. Um, and, and ask them to, to put it away or to leave with it. Um, uh, if they don't, then that may be a situation where you want to think about having the, you know, calling the police if you feel like there's going to be some sort of safety threat there. But you'll have to play that by ear a little bit. But I mean, I think the moral of the story is don't freak out. Um, I, I think there's a calm and rational way you can handle the situation. Um, and I think most folks who have gone through all of the, uh, the task of getting the concealed carry aren't in a rush to have their license taken away. So most folks are going to comply. Uh, a lot of people may just forget or, or something like that. Um, so someone asked, will allowing guns on my property affect my insurance? Um, unfortunately, that's an answer I don't necessarily know. I say consult your insurance company. Uh, there have been some conversations that I've heard from people uh, saying things one way or another. I think it's best practice for you to actually call your insurance company and get clarity on that. I wouldn't trust someone saying that, oh, Joe Schmo told me that he lost his insurance because he posted a sign. I don't know that that's necessarily the case. And I think there's a lot of misinformation that's going around. But talk to your insurance company, see what they have to say so you get clarity on that. And then um, the last question is, uh, are places like churches, synagogues, and temples prohibited locations? Um, and the answer to that is no, they're not prohibited locations. Uh, places of worship were not included in the list of prohibited locations, which means that if there's no sign posted on the church, synagogue, or temple, then concealed carry is allowed. Um, I know there's been uh, some folks who are concerned about this that were thinking about what they could do to change that, but right now um, that is not the case. Um, and, and so concealed carry is allowed there. Do we have any other questions that are coming? Yes, actually. <clears throat> Can a business allow customers to carry concealed yet prohibit employees from doing it? So again, that I think that's a very interesting situation too. Um, I, I, I don't want to give a clear answer um, because I don't have one. So I will say the, the, the Illinois Concealed Carry Act doesn't speak to that specifically. So we don't get guidance from there. Um, what that really is going to come down to is a matter of employment law and um, from what I do know about employment law, employers are able to create rules around operations for their employees. So um, one thought is that that would extend to the carrying of handguns. I do say that before you try to impose that, have a conversation with an attorney who can really direct you on that because I think that is going to be a little specific and it's going to take a little bit more legal advice. So we know we don't get a clear answer from the Concealed Carry Act. I think the answer lies in employment law and, and, and really to appreciate all of the nuances of that, I think the best answer is, is unfortunately, and I sort of hate doing this to people, but you're going to need to consult an attorney on that but that that's a question I've heard come up before um, uh, but but so but and I think it's an important one to make sure you get right any other questions all right 
Well, if there's no other questions, I definitely want to thank you all for your time. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll just sort of say a couple words in closing that there are many more questions that businesses are going to encounter as the implications of the Concealed Carry Act take effect. While the law is very clear on the requirements of gun owners seeking to apply for a license, there are, there are so many more questions that rem uh, remain regarding how the law introduces new rights, responsibilities, and legal obligations for other members of the community, such as businesses. Some of these questions will be addressed through further amendments to the statute. There are folks who are who are ramping up and sort of thinking about different tweaks to add to the statute, while others are while other questions will undoubtedly be resolved through litigation uh, between and unfortunately at, at the expense of private parties. The legal implications of your business decisions with regard to these questions should not be taken lightly. These are important questions. It is best to seek an attorney to discuss the specific needs and concerns of your business, as it is un unwise to determine how to safeguard your business from liability without a comprehensive knowledge of the law. The Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence hopes that you find this information helpful. Uh, for further information and um, to access an electronic copy of, of the Illinois Citizens Concealed Carry Handbook, uh, please, please visit our website, www.concealedcarryandme.com. Again, my name is Candace Moore. You can always reach out to me via email if you have any particular questions or if you would like this pre presentation replicated for your group. We, we still continue to do outreach in that way, and I'd love to work with your group to get you either printed materials or access to some of our electronic materials. Um, and with that, I'll just say thank you, and I appreciate your time. Oh, yes. Sorry. Well, actually, I won't give our phone number because uh, our we're actually moving offices recently, and so our mm -hmm. phone numbers are going to change. So um, instead of sending you into some sort of phone abyss, I, I'll, I won't give you a phone number, but my email will still work, which is cmore, C-M-O-O-R-E, at I-C-H-V dot org. Again, that's C-M-O-O-R-E, at ICHV dot org. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Candace, for that wonderful presentation. We really appreciate it. And I think I said the name of the organization wrong and in the beginning. It's the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Uh, we hope that this webinar has been has provided you with lots of useful inf information related to your transactional legal needs of your small business. And we hope that you will consider letting the Law Project fulfill your legal needs. Uh, you can obtain a copy of our application for legal assistance by either downloading it from our website, which is www.thelaw p-r-o-j-e-c-t dot org and um, or you can actually contact our office by phone our phone number is 312-939-3638 and we will happily mail one of our applications to you we do have some um, eligibility criteria we consider household income the benefit to the community of your business the quality of jobs that are created by your business and your family size but um, we do take, those are all of our um, eligibility criteria. Also, if you are a startup business, we do ask you to attach a copy of your business plan to the application. If you are already an existing business, we do not require a business plan. Uh, once we obtain an application from a potential client, we begin the process of assessing your legal needs and finding a qualified pro bono attorney who will handle the requested legal work. Our goal is to ensure that TOP clients receive high quality professional representation. To give it you um, our address, we are located at 100 North LaSalle Street, Suite 600. And again, our phone number is 312-939-3638. And our website is thelawproject.org. Thank you very much for your time. And again, Candace, thank you very much for that web presentation.